you get a service. You get a service. You get a service. We all get services. That's pretty much the March 2019 Apple event summed up in about five seconds. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome, thanks for stopping by. On the channel, we upload content about filmmaking, photography, tech, and lifestyles. So if those topics interest you, please consider subscribing with notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And today is a special day because Apple actually just concluded the live stream of their March 2019 Apple event. And naturally, we've got a few things to talk about. It should really come as no surprise that the March 2019 Apple event was entirely a services focused Apple event. Apple announced five new services that hopefully will help pave the way for Apple's future. Some I love, some I kinda somewhat hate, but the nice thing is it's actually entirely up to you to decide which services will help you out, and it's up to me to break them down for you. So without further ado, let's do it. Let's break down the five services that Apple announced at the March 2019 Apple event. The first announcement that Apple made was Apple News Plus. Apple News Plus is probably most notably Apple's answer to magazines being available within the Apple News app. With Apple News Plus, there will now be over 300 different magazines actually added within the Apple News app that you can get access to for just $9.99 a month. Hundreds of different leading newspapers and magazines that would otherwise cost you, I think Apple said, over $8,000. So $10 a month for over $8,000 worth of content. It's a pretty good deal. And you'll get all of this content, sometimes presented in cool and creative new ways, like with animated covers, redesigned articles, all that from sources like Sports Illustrated, Travel and Leisure, People, Wired, Vox, I mean, the sources go on and on. Again, all for just $9.99 per month with implemented family sharing, so you could actually share that subscription service with up to six different members of your family household. And Apple actually spent a pretty good amount of time at the actual keynote, emphasizing quality, curation, and privacy in regard to Apple News Plus, which is, Awesome, three fundamentals of a good subscription service. So now you can get curated news, personalize your interests, on the go, on your desktop, all within the Apple News app, all without having to worry about your privacy. So you can get the news you want, read the content you want with only you knowing what you're reading. And I think it's a pretty cool step in the right direction for magazine readers and news readers across the world. And if you read newspapers or magazines or get your news through Apple News on a daily basis, Apple News Plus is probably gonna be pretty interesting to you. Personally, I don't subscribe to a single magazine. I think the last magazine I actually subscribed to was like a bird watching magazine when I was in like the eighth grade. So I'm probably not going to be using Apple News Plus, but if you're a magazine or news reader, you're going to want to check it out. And at the time of making this video, Apple is actually offering a one month free trial. So if you're not sure yet, you could actually try it out before actually subscribing. More information, a link to that free trial and a link to the official Apple News Plus video trailer can be found in the video description box below. So definitely be sure to check those links out for more about Apple News Plus. But moving on to Apple's next big announcement, one I am probably the most excited about, Apple Card. I gotta be completely honest here, I don't think I ever saw the Apple Card coming. It kind of just came out of the blue. And for those of you who know me, or for those of you who are subscribed to this channel, you know I'm a pretty big credit card user. Not in the sense that I use my credit cards for everything and I run myself into the ground with debt, although that usually happens once per year after new Apple products are announced. Not in the sense where I use my credit cards to rack up a lot of debt, but in the sense that I actually use different credit cards for different purchases to rack up as much cash back as possible. In a nutshell, the Apple Card is basically Apple's solution to a perfect paperless credit card. And really, it eliminates the need to worry about fine print card agreement details. In terms of cash back, Apple is actually offering 2% cash back on all Apple Pay purchases and 3% cash back on all Apple purchases. And not only will you get that cash back, you'll get that cash back on a daily basis. You don't have to wait a month or sometimes two months to get your cash back from your purchases. You get it every single day. That's pretty much nuts. Two to 3% cash back on your purchases on a daily basis. Apple immediately got my attention when they started talking about this. Your earned cash back will be added to your already existing Apple Cash Card if you have that set up so that you could treat that cash back exactly like it should be treated, like cash cash back. What do you do with that cash back? Well, it should be treated like cash 
it's gonna be like cash. On top of that, you won't have to worry about fees associated with the Apple Card. Upfront, Apple is already telling you you don't have annual fees, you don't have cash advancement fees, no late fees, really no fees at all, all with an interest rate that Apple's advertising will be among the lowest in the world. And I could stop there, I'd be sold. But typical Apple, it gets even better. You get a whole new level of privacy and security because purchases can only be made with the technologies of Apple Pay. So you have to use your face ID, touch ID, and unique transaction codes to authorize a purchase. And for the instances in which retailers are not yet accepting Apple Pay, you actually also get a physical Apple Card card. With the digital version of Apple Card, you do get a physical version, for instance, is where you need to use that. And it is potentially the sexiest credit card I have ever seen in my entire life. The Apple Card is a titanium laser etched Apple designed credit card that you can use just like you would any other physical credit card without any numbers on the card itself. And honestly, with a design that just looks Beautiful. I never thought I could be turned on by a credit card, but <laughs> needless to say, this credit card is basically going to take my current go-to credit card with just 1.5% cash back and blow that thing out of the water. The privacy and security of the digital card and all the in-app features, on top of how beautiful the actual physical card is, personally, for me, make the Apple Card a no-brainer. Apple Card will be available in summer 2019. I cannot wait. For more information on Apple Card, a link to the official Apple Card trailer and a way to be notified for when Apple Card gets released. All the links for all that will be in the video description box below, so be sure to check that out. But moving on to Apple's next announcement, we have Apple Arcade. Apple Arcade is going to be Apple's own version of a video gaming subscription service. Apple Arcade aims to provide hundreds of new video games in an all-you-can-play format on all your favorite Apple gaming devices, all for one monthly price, all without ads and all without in-app purchases. So basically, what you see is what you're going to get, one monthly price, and with offline gaming available, access for, once again, up to six different family members members for family sharing, and yet again, a strong focus on privacy. It'll be pretty fun to learn more about Apple Arcade and exactly what titles will be available in Apple Arcade, and I'm pretty interested to see how much it will cost and how popular it will be amongst the Apple gaming community. More information on Apple Arcade, a link to the official Apple Arcade video, and for a way to be notified for when Apple Arcade actually launches in fall of 2019, you can check out the video description box below. Next up, we're going to talk about Apple TV channels, and Apple TV channels is pretty much synonymous with Apple's new Apple TV app. Apple TV channels is basically Apple's way of offering you only the premium channels you want without having to subscribe to an entire package, like many of the existing cable companies or streaming services require you to. And although it's still kind of unclear how much this will actually cost and how it will work within the Apple TV app, it is certainly something to get excited about. Obviously, we all have different preferences when it comes to TV shows and movies available on different streaming platforms. And sometimes it could get a little chaotic wanting one show and having to buy a whole package of shows, it's too much. Apple TV channels is Apple's way of fixing that. And I'll be very curious to see how this works out and how much it'll cost, because currently I subscribe to YouTube TV, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Showtime. I got a lot of different streaming services that I subscribe to, some of which I don't even use, literally for just one show. So I'm excited to be able to pick and choose what shows I want to subscribe to, hopefully cutting down costs and hopefully making my actual viewing experience that much more organized and unique to me. We'll have to wait until May 2019 to see how this will actually work within the Apple TV app. And another cool little side note, Apple TV is actually coming to different devices like Roku, Fire Stick, and even in some smart TVs. Pretty interesting move on Apple's behalf, actually allowing their Apple TV app to be accessed on non-Apple products. But hey, Apple's gotta do something, and we've heard in the past that Apple's becoming more of a services-based company, so that pretty much makes sense. More information on Apple TV channels and a link to the official Apple TV channels video trailer can be found in the video description box below. In last, but certainly not least, the announcement we all knew was coming. Coming soon, we will get Apple TV Plus. To put it in a nutshell, Apple TV Plus is basically Apple's version of Netflix. All of Apple's original TV shows and original movies will be available in Apple TV Plus, giving shows from some of the most talented people in video, including Steven Spielberg, J.J. Abrams, Oprah, and with big names like that and some already pretty impressive shows, it's pretty clear that Apple wants to hit the ground running in fall 2019 when Apple TV Plus becomes available. And although Apple hasn't confirmed the pricing of Apple TV Plus yet, Apple has confirmed that all Apple TV Plus content will be ad-free. Top tier picture and audio quality for some of Apple's best original TV 
shows and movies will be available on this platform in over 100 countries coming in fall of 2019. More information on Apple TV Plus, a link to the official Apple TV Plus video trailer, and a way to be notified for when Apple TV Plus officially launches can be found in the video description box below. So five big, huge services announcements at the March 2019 Apple event. Some kind of surprising, some definitely expected. Apple Card is without doubt the most exciting announcement I got out of the event. Cannot wait to sign up for that thing. But don't forget to comment down below your favorite service that Apple announced at their March 2019 event. Are you excited for Apple News Plus? Are you going to be subscribing to Apple TV Plus? Comment all your thoughts on the new services from Apple in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And in the meantime, I'm going to go make some room in my wallet for this beautiful new titanium physical Apple card. Should I put it in the front? Should I put it in the back? Should I just keep it alone in my pocket? <gasps> I cannot wait. I will see you guys in my next video. Leave it to Apple to get me this excited over a piece of titanium. Then again, it's not just any piece of titanium, it's Apple's piece of titanium. Still just a piece of titanium.